Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Dungeon Guide series for Final Fantasy XIV. This time we're going to be taking a look at the new dungeon released in patch 6.5, the Lunar Subterrain. Now for the trash pools in here, they are all stunnable, so you can use that to interrupt some of the abilities. But starting off, the Plague will have a large line AoE that is very easy to just move out of. The Derek will have a frontal cone AoE that you should be able to easily sidestep. And the Archdemons have a circular AoE that they're able to throw out. For the next two groups, again, watch out for the large line AoE from the Plague. The Archaeo Demons have a circular AoE that they'll throw out, and the Humbabas have a very small cone AoE. Should bring you to the first boss, Dark Elf. Hexing Stabs is going to spawn two stabs on the platform that will end up doing line AoEs covering the entire portion of the platform that they are on in a cross pattern. When he does Shadowy Sigil, you want to look at the symbol circling around him and then stand on the opposite symbol on the ground. The next time he casts Hexing Stabs, you'll want to look where the stabs are and reposition quickly, as he'll then cast Sorceress Shroud, which is going to hide the stabs. This does not make them disappear, they are still there, and he will make the AoEs go off shortly. So make sure that you remember where they are so you can reposition. Void Dark 2 is going to put a circular e AoE on all party members, so you want to spread out, and then go back into the position for where the stabs were going to explode. If you are hit by the Stav's explosion, it will cause a doom effect on everyone hit that needs to be cleansed off as soon as possible, along with applying a debuff that decreases the amount of time it takes for doom to actually go off. So if you are hit multiple times throughout the fight, it eventually gets to where doom immediately procs as soon as it hits you. We'll then cast Hexing Stavs one more time, this time summoning three Stavs, leaving only a single area that you will have open to avoid the AoEs before casting Void Dark 2, causing everyone to spread out, along with Shadowy Sigil, so make sure that you're repositioning on the opposite sign of the symbol circling him, and then immediately repositioning back onto the safe spot to avoid the Ruinous Confluence. Staff Smite is just going to be a Tank Buster, Abyssal Outburst is going to do party-wide damage that you'll just have to heal through. He'll do this two times in quick succession. I'll then follow up with another Hexing Stabs to so find the one square that will not be hit. before he hides them with the Sorcerer's Shroud. And then doing the combo of Void Dark 2 along with Shadowy Sigil. The main ability that you want to avoid in this fight, like I said, is the Staff AoEs as that is the only ability that will apply the Doom effect and the Doom debuff. So if you have to get hit by something, just make sure you're avoiding the Staff AoEs.
In the next section, you'll have a nice flashback to the previous Final Fantasies if you played any of those with the animation style of the goblins here. Make sure you're not getting hit by the Morbles' bad breath, which will be a cone AoE in front of them. This will apply a multitude of debuffs if you are hit by it, so it's definitely something to prioritize avoiding. For the final group here, the Behemoth will have a large cone AoE, along with the Manticore and Piast also having cone AoEs. Now these units can get stuck in the door and will cause them to become untargetable, so make sure that you're staying a little bit away from the door here. Now when you pick up the second boss, you'll want to pay attention to the stone pillars on the outside. He'll start off using Sandblast, which is just going to do AoE damage that you'll have to heal through. And then he'll show you his land slip. This will rotate you two positions in the direction that the arrows are at. For the first one, it's just to introduce you to the ability, so just make sure you're not being pushed on the outside of the platform. He'll then do Antlion March. This will end up hitting two of these stone pillars that have exclamation points on them. This will cause them to start to crumble, and then he'll follow up with a landslip that if you are pushed in front of these stone pillars that are crumbling, you'll end up taking a massive a a damage. If you didn't catch the exclamation points while the Lion March was going on, you can just look at which pillars do not have their name around them anymore. He'll then jump to the center of the platform and cast Earthing Geyser. You'll want to group up to split the damage for this and then immediately start moving as the entire area around it will be affected with six foams under, which will try to suck you into the platform. He'll pick one person to do a pound sand on, which is a large circular AoE, so you just want to make sure you're getting out of these. I'll then do another Sand Blast for party-wide damage. And then going back to the front of the platform and doing another Ant Lion March. Almost always the safe spots for the Ant Lion March is very easily the, either the far left or far right side of the platform. After the Ant Lion March will be another landslip along with the stone pillars falling, so just reposition accordingly. Followed by another Earthing Geyser and Sand Pound. This will repeat for the rest of the fight. After the fourth set of these abilities, if the boss is still alive, there will no longer be any stone pillars that will fall, so it kind of mitigates one of the mechanics and makes it a lot easier, but he should die before then. He'll then do another Sand Blast. And then going back to the front, do another Ant Lion March. Followed by another land slip. Along with the pillars falling. Before doing another earthing geyser and sand pound. If you actually position the earthing geyser far enough away from the boss, anyone who has a gap closing ability can easily move out of the circle that is left behind that is trying to suck people in just by closing onto the boss. For the next group of ads, you can actually take three sets here. The Baron Jesters have a circular AoE that they'll throw on the ground.
And then for the final groups, the Gargoyle along with the Progentrix both have cone AoEs. The Gargoyle can also do a circular AoE around himself. And then the Black Guard also have cone AoEs along with the Vampiris having circular AoEs they can throw on random party members. And this should bring you to the final boss. be happening not for you my friend my hero i will stop you even should it cost me my life Now when you first pick up the final boss, he'll start off with Old Magic, which is going to do party-wide damage that you'll need to heal through, along with applying a continuous AoE along the outside of the platform, so make sure you're scooting in a little bit. He'll then follow up with Duplicitous Battery, which is going to do circular AoEs around the platform in a spiral pattern that will have two separate sets, so you'll need to move in between the AoEs going off. He'll then cast Forsaken Fount, which is going to summon multiple purple orbs in the center of the platform that will explode in circular AoEs, so you just want to move to the outside away from them. He'll then jump to the center of the platform, doing another duplicitous battery, this time also combining it with circular AoEs called Fallen Grace, so make sure that you're spreading out a little bit. He'll then do another Forsaken Fount. This time he will do Contrapeso, which will divide the AoEs in half, causing them to go towards the outside of the platform. So you actually want to stand in the middle where the AoEs originally are. He'll then follow up with a, another Forsaken Fount, and you'll want to identify the orb that is off to the side all by itself, as whenever he does the Contra Peso and splits them in half, this will be the only safe zone in the entire platform. We'll follow up with another Old Magic for party-wide AoE. Then going back to the center of the platform and then do an Antipodal Assault. This is just a 
line AoE that you'll need to group to split the damage for. But afterwards, from the side of the platform that he jumps to, he'll do a hard slash, which is a large cone AoE. So you'll want to reposition close to him on either the left or right side. I'll then go back to the center casting Twilight Phase, which is going to do a large set of line AoEs down the center of the platform. So you'll want to move to the sides of this and then keep picking one side of the platform and casting Dark Impact. You'll want to go all the way to the opposite side of the platform as this is a very large circular AoE. And then do Death's Journey, which is going to do a circular AoE underneath him, along with cone AoEs down each of the purple lines. So make sure that you're repositioning almost exactly in between two of the purple lines to avoid this. And then do another Forsaken Fount. Again, identify which of the purple orbs is on a side all by itself, and then stand like, directly underneath that one. I'll follow up with Old Magic for more party-wide AoE. And then going back to the center of the platform and casting Duplicitous Battery. This will be combined with the circular AoEs on all party members again, so make sure you're spreading out some. And that should be it for the Lunar Subterrain. I hope this helped everyone out. If it did, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you on the next one.